What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, we're gonna take some old Warhammer Fantasy models and update them for a couple of games. Casey! Hey, buddy, what's going on? We're gonna be playing some Kill Team, brother. You want in? Oh yeah, man, I'm definitely down to play some games. The campaign needs a Death Guard faction, dude. Do you reckon you could handle that? Yeah, I, I probably I probably have enough to build a, a, a Death Guard team. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I can cover that. Oh, I forgot to mention, fire up the cloning facility. We need two identical teams. Oh, two identical teams. Is this not a friendly game? Oh, this or... ain't no friendly game, dude. This is a high stakes narrative campaign. And the forces of chaos, well, they need you to bring your A game. All right, well, I guess I just need to hurry up and get this done then. All right, yeah, I'm on it. Don't worry about it, I got it. Yeah, I'll talk to you later, man. Buckle down, dude, get those guys painted fast. We need them ASAP. You and I have to crush the Imperium into dust. All right, so I need to hurry up and get this done. So not only do I need to figure out how to build a kill team, not knowing the new rules, but I need to do it twice and rather quickly. Oh well, nothing to it but to get in there and go for it. Let's start by figuring out what this team is gonna look like. Since I don't have the new kill team rules yet, I am going to need to improvise. I did a little bit of research and found the perfect source of information that led me to picking my specific team. Okay, actually it's a terrible reference, but you know what? We're gonna roll with it and make it work. This is the only picture I could find of a current kill team. It's from the official kill team website and shows an example of a Death Guard squad, three Plague Marines and eight Poxwalkers. Honestly though, that's, that seems pretty sweet. A little bit of shooting, some combat and objective scoring units. I could play this, probably. Not that I know how or anything, we're just really gonna wing this whole thing. Okay, so I have lots and lots of Plague Marines just sitting around right now. So I'm gonna go through them and pick out a few and those will be our starting unit. Luckily, these are actually painted. Some of them I painted a few years ago, some of them I painted in videos pretty recently. Check them out if you haven't seen it. But these will be a good start and we're gonna fill out the rest with Poxwalkers. Now here's the thing, I have a lot of Poxwalkers. 40 of them in fact, but only five are painted and 20 of them haven't even been built. So I'm gonna go with another unit that I've been meaning to get out for a very long time, Plague Bearers. And not just any Plague Bearers, but the old Warhammer Fantasy pewter ones. So much character and love went into these older models. There's something very unique about these in particular. I got a set of 10 of these models from warfireminis.com a while back and they've just kind of been sitting around. The painted models I actually picked up on eBay not too long after for 20 bucks, which is fantastic for these pewter minis that normally go for about 50 bucks for the full squad. And that's on the low end. Sometimes you see these models for about 10 bucks per model. So if you can find them for less than that, I'd say around $5 per model, then that's really where you're gonna wanna get these. And honestly, these are really unique and perfect for pretty much any Nurgle army. Now you might be wondering why I'm going with these models and not the excess of Pockwalkers that I actually already have. Well, the answer is pretty simple. These look way cooler. So I have my kill teams picked out. Three Plague Marines and eight Plague Bearers that we will proxy for Poxwalkers. Now all I have to do is prep and paint them all, 16 models. And generally when I paint one model per week for the channel, 16 starts to sound like kind of a lot, but we're gonna get through this. We just need to make this as easy as we possibly can and still have fun with it. The good thing too, is that I have just the way to make these dynamic and awesome looking, and we can pretty much paint them up in less than three minutes per model. But seriously, like three minutes, you'll see. Before we get to those tips, let's do one how I would normally paint something, just so we can kind of compare the results at the end.
After priming the model black and shooting white ink over the top, I'm gonna come in with some very appropriate Plague Bearers flesh to tint the white ink and give us our base coat. Of course, everything is done in batches to make the most out of our time. So first we prime all of our models, then we zenithal white over the top of them all, base coat over them all, and so on. Even painting traditionally, this is still going to save you the most amount of time in the long run. Alright, after that base coat comes the first major color, a little bit of pale flesh tone. Anything light, really, will give the skin a nice variation in tonality and show off some nice organic transitions. I like to put this color mostly on the upper half of the models, focusing on the head, shoulders, knees, and stomach. To bring in some extra variety, I'm choosing to pull in some Athermatic Blue Contrast paint. For my personal models, this color fits in nicely, but you could bring in some purples or even some reds to give them a little bit of bruising or shading that just makes the models look that much more interesting. The point is, it's up to you how much color variety you actually want. Of course, they're, they're your models. <laughs> so now that the base layers are done and we have some really interesting colors going on, I'm gonna bring them all together using an oil wash. This will tie the colors together and tint everything just slightly towards a purple tone and give the models a sense of unity, even though they've all pretty much been painted differently. Alternatively, you could use a regular wash, just watered down a little bit so it doesn't go and stain everything too much. You really just want it to settle in the recesses and tint all of your colors just slightly toward your wash. It does take some time for the oil wash to dry, but once it does, we can start to highlight the models. I'm using a combination of my colors in different mixes to go brighter and brighter all over the model. In this case, ivory mixed with the base color liberally layered over the raised details. This layer of paint is still not fully opaque, so that color underneath really influences the look. The ivory lightens it up and desaturates it, which works really well for pale, nasty skin. A side effect of the initial phase of priming and using a zenithal highlight did make our blades look particularly like poison. I'm gonna take advantage of that and just edge highlight those with a mix of light green and ivory. Normally I would just paint over this with a metallic and call it a day, but I'm actually really into the way these blades turned out. Continuing to layer colors, I'm trying to blend the colors together wherever they meet, but not like you'd think. I start by highlighting each color with hard edges and then with an almost pure ivory, and pale flesh mix, I go in between them. This makes it look like a natural transition on the skin and still gives us a pretty nice gradation of color. Finally, I'll finish the eyes off with dots of pure white gone over with fluorescent pink. Again, this is more because of my personal army and how it already looks, but it's just as easy to change out that pink with whatever fits with your army. Probably red, it's usually red. All right, so that was the first model highlighted and finished with a regular brush. In all honesty, it doesn't take too long to paint a model this way, about 30 to 40 minutes per model, if you're taking your time and just kind of throwing paint around. It's mostly about keeping the paint flowing and just making decisions on the fly. That way you can get through the models quickly and still get a pretty nice result. Now let's take a look at the alternate way I did these in under three minutes. All right, so for the most part, it's gonna be the same process. I'm going to airbrush the color variety onto the model just like I did before, and throw on that purple wash. But instead of coming in with a brush to layer on colors once that's dry, I'm just skipping straight to a dry brush of that pale flesh. I'm going to lightly cover the whole model with this color. It's gonna pick up all the little edge details and bring those colors together. Then I'll switch to ivory and focus on the upper half of the model, especially around the face. This will bring your attention up to the face and give the model a little extra variation in color. All that in under three minutes. So really quick with maximum results. Hey man, just wanted to check in and let you know I, I, I've done it. I've done it. I, I finished the two kill teams. Uh, why did we need these in such a hurry? Yeah, we kind of still making the terrain, but just, just chuck them in the post whenever. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, I'll just ship them out whenever. That's that's fine. I'll uh, be over here doing more, more stuff. Just getting prepped. And I'll uh, talk to you later. Yeah, just just ship them out when you can, dude. All right, bye. Just just ship them out when you can. Oh, Casey, Casey, are you listening? Suck it! Your stinky boys are going down. 
Hey, man, uh, do you know what these guys are up to? Not a clue, man. I've got no idea what they want with a baby channel like me, so I'm just going to roll with it. Yeah, that's, that's probably a good call. They kind of seem like they're a little bit off their rocker. Yeah, I think those late nights and glue fumes from building those giant boards are finally getting to them. I think it's probably best to just do what they say. Yeah, it's not too comforting. Uh, but you know what? I'm looking forward to, to doing the game, so... Uh, yeah, I'll catch you. Get you on that game. It'll be fun. Yeah, me too. See you there. So let's wrap this thing up nice and neat. Here are the models I painted using mostly a brush. And here are the models that got a lot of dry brushing. There is a difference, but when you put them side by side, it kind of starts to go away. If you put all 20 down on the table, they really start to blend together. If you're into playing games for the tabletop, then a huge suggestion that I have is to put the work into something when it really matters to you. These models are really fun and cool, but the amount of time that they will spend in any game is probably pretty minimal. So remember that when you sit down to batch paint a set of 20 minis. Ask yourself, how much time will you actually be looking at them compared to your centerpiece models and larger, fancier stuff? Where should you be spending your time? Probably not on chaff units that will be gone really quickly. That being said, I am very happy with the way that these turned out. I dig the colors and they fit very well with my current Death Guard models, so I'll probably be using them in my army. On another note, these models are going to be sent out so I can remotely play some games with my friends. But what I need from you the audience is a super sweet team name, like the Cotton Candy Killers. Not really. You're much better at this than I am, so please feel free to leave team names down in the comments, and the one with the most upvotes will be the team name for our little bracketed Kill Team game session. Nothing inappropriate, of course, but, you know, keep it fun. Anyways, thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And in their videos, because we're, we're going to play some Kill Team.